Please stand in the reading of the scripture uh, from Matthew 20, 25 through 28. It's kind of in the middle part of the conversation of the book of Matthew, but we'll do a response reading. I'll start at 25, and you'll do 26, uh, and then we'll go just respond reading. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the ruler of the Gentiles loyal over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. And whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. You know, when I look at today's world, or even us as well, <clears throat> this world kind of focuses on individuality, fulfilling my wants, my desires, right? The world actually teaches us to dream, not in a way that we know in a nice way, but dream of something big. There's always, the world talks about dream cars, right? Dream house, dream jobs, dream school, or even we used to call it the American dream. It's all about you move here, you migrate here, and then you could make a good living. And that was what the American dream was. You're able to accomplish what you really desire, whether it's big or small. Opportunities. Maybe they might have worked to really motivate, and maybe some of you or your, your parents or your grandparents or grandparents were, came here and be motivated to have so that maybe you could have a better life. But today, it seems like that focus has kind of backfired in certain ways. It's because it's no longer about, I think back then maybe it's, I don't even have my needs fulfilled, so I'm going to work hard to gain. But now, it's no longer about my needs. Let's look at this society, this world. It's about my wants, what I want, not what I need. Consumerism is probably what it has been probably rooted in our lives as well. Someone said the consumerism hinges on the belief that if we only bought what we needed, our economy, economy would collapse. So as we look at this world, marketing and economy, it's all about what you want. Hey, this is what you want. Well, they turn into what you need, right? So this world disguises the want into more of a need. So it's more like, oh, I need that. No, you want that. I need this car, right? I need 100-inch screen TV. I need steak dinner. I need the latest phone. I need ice cream. No, you don't need your car, you don't need bigger screen unless your eyes are getting really bad, but you don't need huge TV that is even too big for your house. You don't need the latest phone. You definitely, and I hate, people will hate to hear it, you don't need ice cream. You don't need, some of us don't need steak dinner. We don't need steak for the rest of our lives, right? It's what we want, right? But we turn into like, oh, I need that, I need that. We, we convince our, try to convince ourselves that we need that. It's more about what we want. Because do we really need bigger screen? I mean, it's nice, and some of us, and I realize I need bigger screen for phones and other things, but we don't need the screen that fills the whole wall. Because most of you, some of you don't even turn on TV anymore. You don't, we don't need steak dinner. We don't need the latest phone. Um, it's all about wanting bigger, better, newest things. Last time I was told by a doctor that I need to eat ice cream was when I was eight years old, when my tonsil was swollen so bad that something needed to cool down. So he said, you should get ice cream. And it's probably one of the ways, because there's no way that I would drink something cold, milk or anything like that. So that's the last time doctor recommended that I should, I need ice cream. For some of you, probably never. Still, I'm sure when you go home in your freezer, there is couple of cartons or pint of ice cream waiting for you, and you're thinking, yeah, I need that. Let's be honest, we don't need that. Um, many things in life we have, we don't need, but we want. That's what we have. Um, many years of us being trained by marketing in this world, and probably our desire of our flesh has trained us so well that we learn to turn my wants into needs. Right? And younger generation, we don't have to teach them. They already know. They already learned. Dad, I need this. I need new phone. No, you don't need new phone. You want new phone. Right? The world no longer has to do th that for us anymore because, oh, marketing and media is doing a great job covering that up. 
but we are so easily already in that. We already are trained. We already are brainwashed. Now, the real problem is not that we live in the society of consumerism. That's already been going on for throughout history. The real problem is that we bring that into church, into God's kingdom. We're losing the heart of servanthood because we start focusing on my want rather than my needs. Therefore, we neglect the needs of even others as well. Let's be honest. How many of you said, I need different donuts? I am tired of, I need different flavors. I need different icings. Let's be, that's my struggle is that as a pastor, none of us need that in the box. We want it. And we turn it into, we need that. But technically, I don't think anyone needs that. Right? But we love that. We enjoy that. And how many more other things that we have in our church that it's not need-based, but want-based? I want to see this. I want to see that. Right? And I think that's the real issue. And then we're losing that heart. So it becomes more like me, my wants. It's not even my needs anymore. It's about my want. Today's passage started with this conflict argument. And it's very interesting. It's very funny. It's not even disciples are not arguing right now. It's actually more of mother of two disciples. And it's more than anything else. It's the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee. So mom comes to Jesus. I'm like, wow. They even have kind of the helicopter mom back then. I don't know if you guys know the term. Asking... It's like, hey, you know, my son should, be, son should be left and right side of you when you go and take over the kingdom, you know, not fully understand what is going on. So there are James and John and their mother. I'm sure they all three of them are kind of in together, saying like, oh, you know, you should, you know, have them. That's not what I'm requesting. And Jesus saying, verse 22, you do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I'm, I'm to drink? They said to him, we are able they have no idea what he's, talk, what he's asking them of, right? Because the cup that they're about to drink is far more greater and far more burdening and suffering than they could ever imagine. Because that is the cup that he prays in the Garden of Gethsemane. Even he did not want to if it was possible. That's why he asked God, take this cup if it's not your will from me. But they didn't get it. He said to them, 23, you will drink my cup, but sit at my right hand, and my left is not mine to grant, but it's for those who, whom it has been prepared for my, by my Father. So he's probably saying, you might may be able to walk the way of the cross, just like I will. But for you to be where you want to be is not even up to me. It's about Father's will. Now, after this is going on, basically, simply, he's saying, no, right? But he's trying to explain why. But interesting is it wasn't just the John and James and the mother. They're there, and they're probably kind of like not happy. But 26, the disciples are upset. When they, the ten, the rest, heard it, they were indignant at the two brothers. So this wasn't like, oh, how dare you speak things like that? You know, it's bad of you because you shouldn't even ask things like that. It's yes, but also like we're, we're kind of jealous. We want that too. So how come you guys are acting? How come you're using your mom? I have mom. I could bring my mom and ask him too. That kind of issue too, because there is upset, frustration with jealousy. And unfairness is what they're thinking. It's not fair because you guys are close to him. doesn't mean you get good seats with him. We want that too. It's unfair. They also want it right and left side. They want it. So he tells them this great message which is today's passage. But 26, it shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever will be first among you must be your slave. What does that mean? If you want to be in that position, if you want to be leaders, if you want to be in that position of authority and power, it starts with you serving others. You need to be servant for others first. Because that place... Even where I am, it's not a place where I'm served, but I serve others. Even if it's not desire, our desire to be leaders, even some of you says, okay, then I don't need to be in that position, I don't need that title. No, 
Here is what he says, 28. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life for a ransom for many. What does that mean? He technically never came to position in a higher position. He never took any office in any king- kingdom in this earth, right? Or of course, he's Son of God, so he doesn't need any title. But he still came, showing the way of Christ is that you serve because you follow his footsteps. So we need to serve, and obviously that's what the today's title is, restoring, right? Servanthood. So what does that mean, to serve, serve others? Does that mean work? Does that mean doing things? Some of you are thinking, oh, is this one of those Pastor Jake's message about recruiting people to serve? Yes and no, because it's more than just that. So meaning of serving, what does that mean? Serving, uh, diakoneo. Some of you already know what the Greek word that means. It is mean to serve, to minister. It's more like today's word. It's like waiter, waitress kind of term. Because what this Greek word means that you wait at the table, which is what? You come, when the waitress or waiter comes to your table, they're ready to serve. They're ready to take your order, and then they go to the kitchen, and then bring back what you order, and then whatever you need, they're always there. So they're attending your needs as your customer. So serving means not you doing things just for people, but no, you wait, and you see what they, people need, and then you serve them according to their need is what it means to serve. 37 times in the New Testament, this word has been used. And it's more than that. Actually, Greek word, this is, you know what it means, literally? Kicking up dust, which means you're moving so fast that you're kicking up dust everywhere because you're moving around so much. You're not just like... Just waiting, it's like, oh, I'm going to serve you by standing there. But no, once you know the people's need or what God desires you to do, you're moving around so fast that you're kicking dust all the places. That's what it means. Caring for needs of others as God, Lord, guides you and, and leads you in an active, practical way. And then it's connected also with faith as well. And of course, diaconal, and you have many times through the seminar, that word trans, you know, transfer into what? The word deacon. So especially those who are deacon, appointed or ordained deacon, you are the people who serve. It is, we consider the leadership position, but more than anything else, it is to serve. And the same for pastors, for us to take care of the sheep that's under our, our, our authority. So we know that we have to serve one another, yes, but we understand this, but how do we then supposed to do? Joining a team? As you might think, oh, so is it, I need to find a place to serve here in this church. And, and if you end up serving after this message, great. But I want to touch up something more deeper matter. Because I don't want you to just run and say, okay, I need to serve, so I'm just going to serve. I'm going to join this team or that and things, things like that. No, there is something more truth that you have to understand about, about serving especially in the biblical sense. So first thing about serving is, the serving is about putting others first. That is an important attitude. Matthew seven twelve. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, you do also to them, for this is a law and the prophets. And we know this as the golden rule, right? You do others like others would done to you. It's golden rule. So when you serve, it's all about what is needed for other people. You know, sometimes we tend to do what we want to do, even serving others. So you're like, oh, I have this, so just take this. I wanted to give to you, but I don't need that. No, 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 I wanted to serve you, so do this, or I'm doing this for you, but if they don't need it, there's no point of serving, because serving, as I said, the word literally means that you wait and see their needs and, and helping them. Because maybe sometimes what people need that's around you is maybe simple words of encouragement, simple caring, kindness that you could show. Not something big, but small things. Maybe just asking how they are doing or even praying for them. Because it's not about what you can do, but it's all about what you could do to help others as well. And it's still, it starts with looking at other people and see what is going on with other people. Philippians 2, 4 says this, Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others as well. So when you serve others, do you see that? Do you look at their interests, what they're going through and serve? Or do you like, oh, I feel like doing this, so oh, oh, here, sir, I'm going to do this for you. 
Isn't that nice? Isn't that serving? It's like I say, oh, I, I brought this nice food to you, and they're allergic to this food. I'm like, no, no, you should eat it. I, I did my best. They're like, no, I can't eat this because I'm allergic to the ingredients you put in. Because you basically means what? Sometimes we don't know, so we do that. But sometimes you, you're not showing any interest. You just want to show them what you can do. Look for interest of others. Do you know what is going on in the lives of your neighbors, your community, or even your family members, or even the people that sit in front of you, next to you, behind you? Because it seems like you sit in the same place. Every time I stand on here every Sunday, you're sitting in the almost same places, right? And you've probably been kind of your pew neighbor for some of you many, many years. Then do you show interest? I'm not talking about just saying hi. I'm talking about do you know what is going on? Do you know what their prayer request is sitting in front of you, behind you, next to you, and around you as well? Even sometimes family members don't know what other family members are going through as well. That's why sometimes serving others is more important than just working and doing things for others. And it starts with caring. It starts with showing compassion and even paying attention to others. You know, we have many different people going through different sickness and illness. Do you, do you show interest in them when they all of a sudden walk in? I'm not saying that you bombard them with everyone piling up. And say, oh, you have, you have cane. What's going on? I mean, then they might be too stressed out, maybe. Because we do sometimes good job with bombarding them with certain attention. But it's more like, hey, oh, what's going on? Is there anything I can pray for you? Right? Because that's why some members like, tell me, like, oh, pastor, don't tell others. Not because they are ashamed of what's going on, but sometimes they want tons of phone calls. And literally someone asked me this past week too. It's like, oh, yeah, just keep it to yourself. It's nothing major, and I don't want to be bombarded with phone calls. And, I mean, they do appreciate, people appreciate. But sometimes, some of you know, that when you go through sickness, and you, don't, you just want to kind of sometimes rest. When it's not really fatal, nothing really serious, but you just want a couple weeks off, right? Especially people who caught COVID. They don't want to broadcast everybody. They want to be like, be quarantined for two weeks away from everybody. But when the people find out, they call you like, you have COVID? Like, oh, no, you're not coming to church for the next three months, right? You know, things like that. Just stress people out. I mean, sometimes we do have to show interest and care, but sometimes we don't want to do too much of it. But be genuine. Because you know who did exactly that? Our God. He did exactly things that we needed. He did that for us. He didn't need to do anything, but he still cared for us. But he knew our needs. So just at the right time when we're sinners, Christ died for us, right? God provided for us. His sacrifice and the serving of Jesus Christ was just all about fulfilling our needs. What things, I mean, throughout, if you look at Old Testament, it's all about we see God providing all their needs. The problem is always People have their wants and their complaints. But if they just took everything God has given them and just faithfully followed God, they would have been fine throughout. But yet, they didn't want their needs. They wanted their wants. So they asked God. They asked prophets or leaders, complain. But God knew. And that's why he waited and waited. And then finally, he sent his one and only son, the Savior and Lord that we desperately was in need of. He sent. And you just serve through his life, his death and resurrection. Even, even right now, at the right hand of God, he's interceding for us and waiting for that day of his return. God always cared about our needs, and he knew us so well, well because he created us. But he was always interested in us and cared and loved us every moment of our lives. And we experienced that. And that's what we need to imitate. Caring and paying attention to the needs of others, interest of others. So putting others first than sometimes my wants and needs. And number two, serving is about using the resources that God has given you. First Peter 4, 10, 11 uh, says this, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as the good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion over and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
it's not about doing what you want to do, but it's about using your gifts and talents and resources that God has given you. Now, some of you might say, well, Pastor, I don't have much to share. There's a lot of issues in my life, struggles. I barely meet my own ends meet. Well, you might not have much to share. You might not have, you have nothing to share, but at least you have time. You have maybe an abling body. Maybe you have abling hands or even your mind. Or some of you, you have abling body. One of the things I want to challenge you is that we have, we just finished the parking lot construction or the, the ceiling of it. It's nice and, and there's bigger lots. I think church over the years learned, learned that some of you cannot park that well. So I need to give you a little more space. Yeah. Um, so um, despite even we have some of the cars able to park its own, still maybe not big enough. And plus we need to open sometimes or why because some of you have different needs. Uh, and, and we have park not is never full, fortunately, yet. Oh, I, I don't know, fortunately is the right word right now. But it's never full. But parking lot adjacent to every building is always full, which means that some of you who really need those parking spaces come in, find out there's no. So you have to park far away, or your spots has dropped you up because you, maybe you can't walk that far, or maybe you have kids and it's not easy. What those who are have abling legs and does not, do not have younger kids, what you could do is you could park far to the remote parking. It's always open. And park there and, and, and walk here. It's, it's literally one minute walk if you're abling. So that others who maybe are not able to walk well or have kids, they could come and park in these parking spaces that are close by. That's one way to, because you're seeking for needs of others instead of your wants. And those who are very strong, you don't, don't feel burdened if you're not able to walk well or you need assistance, don't feel burdened. But I know that clearly there's many of you who are fine because I've seen you walk towards the gym after service, run to the donuts, right, to the coffee, right? You're, you have abling body, then you definitely, and the majority of us definitely should walk more, right? So I think that's something that we could do. Or maybe when you come to church, maybe come five, ten minutes early, Sit in the pews, and you can say hi, but also spend time praying. Praying for worship, praying for praise team, pray for me, and pray for others who are serving, or pray for even our nation. There's many things you could do, small things. Or even after service, you could spend a little time just praying. Or even when we go there, instead of run to the front of the line, you could wait and have, say hi to people and allow people to go first. Small things. Talking about small things to to edify this kingdom together. And, and if you are not able to do all these things, at least even when you're at home, even those who are watching, you could still sit down, take minutes, maybe even 10, 20 minutes to pray for other brothers and sisters, pray for, for a church, pray for pastors. There's things you could do to serve, seeking interests of others with the resources. Even time is, is resource as well. And then some of you are generous and gracious, and you share whether it's, you know, whether it's offering, whether it's giving, or the serving, all different things. I know that many of you do serve. Many of you do many things. But I'm talking about every one of us in this room and watching. If you, are, if you consider yourself part of church, I'm not talking about just TFBC. I'm talking about God's kingdom, the church of Christ, that you need to serve in ways that God has given you. Now, you have a lot of st to share, and you have a lot of gifts and time, abling body, then you have many things you could do. You know, as children, needs a lot of help, and same with youth, and many other things. And, and I know that some of you are already serving, so I, I thank you for that. Because number three, serving is basically worshiping and glorifying God. Amen. Matthew five sixteen. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give Glory to your Father who is in heaven. So technically our doing, our serving, our deeds that we do, good deeds, are not to, for us, I mean, people appreciate what we do, but eventually they will should lead to glorifying God in heaven. Through the good work, people see how great our God is. You know, even to share, when our team was in, in Japan, you know, all of us tried to really 
reflect the goodness and love of God, whether to hotel and whether to people we see or in the street. And, and to, we want to represent good image as, as a believers, as Christians. And some came a few times that were interested in what we were doing because we were trying to share love of Christ, even homeless or people in the street as well. And there are a few numbers of people came or we were able to encounter with them and, and share and, and, and just minister to them as well. But we need to continue to do that. In order for us to do so, serving our ministry, serving God has to be all about God and we have to be a true servant for God. What does that mean? Because Jesus Christ is probably the greatest example. Well, not probably, but he is the greatest example. Because for him, serving, doing ministry to others was all about God's will. He was always with God. He submitted to Father's will 100%. Smallest thing he did, it was all about glory of Father. It's about God's timing and his will. We see that throughout all the stories in the gospel books. It's all about him serving God through obeying him and serving others. He didn't decide a smallest thing. He always prayed. He always sought after God's will. Every single miracle, he prayed to God. And that's something that we have to do. Even serving, some of you are like, oh, I don't know what ways I could serve. Pray to God. Ask God for strength and ask God for his will to be done. John 8, 28, 29. So Jesus said to them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing on my own authority, but speak just as the Father taught me. And He who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to Him. So serving is about not just pleasing others, but it's pleasing God. Us ministering to one another, it's about worshiping, glorifying God. So my challenge to you this morning is this. Do you truly have a servant heart? Let us truly restore the servanthood in our church, in our ministry, in our community, and in this world. God needs more workers in this kingdom to show his glory and his love upon the people that he dearly loves. So let us really think about what we could do for his kingdom. But I start with Do you really have heart to serve others? Do you really seek the interest of others? After we finish this service, go out. We need to start serving, big or small, with resources, with talents and gift and time and all those things that God has done. And I know that some of you, as you step out, you'll be ready to serve in another ministry. But even your daily life, even in your family, in your home, in your neighborhood, in your community, in your workplaces. I want to challenge you to serve others so that God will be worshipped and glorified. Amen? Amen. Let's take this time to just pray as we close about what God desires you in your life this morning. Maybe there's a person or maybe family member or maybe co-worker or maybe it's, there's a small thing or big things or just your love or kindness that maybe he desired to show even this morning, maybe even after the service, maybe throughout this week. Let us truly surrender our will and turn to seek his will and ask God this morning, Lord, I want to serve for your kingdom. What is the opportunity for me to do? To whom or with what and how can I serve for your kingdom? So let's reflect and pray and ask God to allow us to seek His will, but through our serving, that His will be done and He will be glorified and worshipped. So let's pray together. Father, God, we just come to You, Lord, knowing that God, Your true Father, Lord, who loved us, who cared for us, who provided all those things. And we know that through Christ, Lord, that Christ has served all of us, Lord, ministered to us through His sacrifice, through His ministry, through His healing and through his death and resurrection, through his power that he has shown us that he was a truly a servant for God, but also for us as well. That he served us even with his life. He loved and cared for us with everything he had because he sought after God's will. So allow us to be to Christ, his servant and Father God, his servant heart, Father God. What is one thing that you're asking us this morning, Lord? What is one thing that you are giving us the opportunity to serve, Lord? 
which individual, in what ways, and how can we serve one another and seek interest of others, Lord? So challenge us this morning, Father God, as we continue to worship you, Lord. The lost worship you and glorify you. t h e r e serving one another to edify this community, Lord, this church, but also expand your kingdom by ministering to the people of this world, Father, who are desperate in need of Savior. So as you have served us, as we experience your servanthood and servant heart, Father God, allow us to serve one another, to serve others, instead of seeking my wants. Allow us to seek the needs of others, Lord, as our needs are already fulfilled by our God, our Christ, our Lord. allow us, would you enable us, strengthen us and give us an opportunity to serve one another that will continue to build this beautiful community given us by the blood of Christ to spend your kingdom and to glorify your name, Father God. So allow us to love you, but also love others as well. For the sacrificial love that you have given us and shown us, Lord. Father God, we thank you for Christ who served with his life to bring us, to give us salvation, to give us hope, to give us message, to give us truth, to give us true life, abundant life that we have in Christ. So allow us, enable us to imitate Christ by serving you and your kingdom and serving others. But allow us to serve all the resources that you have given us allow us to serve with thanksgiving heart grateful heart as you have already provided and fulfill all our needs allow us to pay attention to the needs of others and may continue to build your kingdom together and build this community together as well so would you allow us to serve your kingdom by serving one another serving people in our community and in this world that we'll continue to see your love and your grace continue to spread throughout this world as we serve for your kingdom. So may the grace of Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins, and love of the Father, who gave his only only Son to us, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon us, as we continue to serve selflessly and imitating Christ each and every day, now and forever. Amen. (laughs) 